Hello again, Steve Fentress for the Strassenberg Planetarium at the Rochester Museum and Science Center with things to watch for in the sky for the week plus starting June 25th because the moon's going to be spectacular on the 4th of July. I'll show you in a moment. But let's start on the evening of June 25th, about 9.30, just as it's getting dark. There will be a beautiful crescent moon, and we've had our Stellarium software draw the moon four times larger than it really is, just to convey the feeling that you get looking at it. In addition to the moon, what will be the first stars you'll be seeing coming out this week? I think they will be Vega and Arcturus. Arcturus, high overhead, distinctive orange color that's even more noticeable if you compare to other stars. Vega, a little bit brighter and bluish white in color. And those should be visible high in the sky, pretty far apart, around 930. There are other stars you might catch as well. Down there in the south-southeast, that's Antares, distinctly reddish star. We'll see more of that later. Now, back to that moon. It's in its waxing crescent phase, and so this will be a good week to check every evening. Here we are on the 26th. The next night, the 27th. And if you check every evening, you see the moon moving in its orbit around our Earth. And as it does so, the side facing us has more and more sunshine on it every evening. And so you see the phase go from waxing crescent to first quarter to waxing gibbous moon. And we are going to stop on the evening of the 4th of July. It's a full moon rising on the 4th of July, about 9.30. Technically, the moon is full a little bit after midnight that night, but it, that's only a few hours away. So as you are going to a fireworks show, if you have a clear view right down to the horizon, you might see that moon rising in the southeast and alongside it, Jupiter and Saturn. Here we are at about 10 o'clock when a lot of fireworks shows start. And so you might not see this right at that time. But while the fireworks are going on, the moon, Jupiter, and Saturn will be rising. And after 11 o'clock, as you're going home from the fireworks show, watch for that full moon, Jupiter and Saturn. And then there's more over to the right, that bright reddish star Antares. In what International Astronomical Union star charts show as the constellation Scorpius the Scorpion with its tail dragging on the ground. So Saturn, Jupiter, full moon, and the reddish star Antares and Scorpius all rising clear and easy to see, weather permitting, after 11 o'clock on the evening of the 4th of July. Now we're going to put the moon back to earlier in the week, and you'll see why in just a moment. But first, some stars to look at this week. Or even any time in July, look east as it's getting dark for the giant pattern of three stars shaped sort of like a slice of pizza pointing south, the Summer Triangle. Really easy to see. Three bright stars, Vega, Deneb, and Altair, even visible in full moonlight, even in a city. And look at that little thing there. That's a group of stars informally called the Coat Hanger. Stellarium draws a little shape there for us. If you have binoculars and you scan along a line from Altair to Vega, you'll stumble across the coat hanger. It's really quite striking in binoculars. Let's look north for some familiar groups. Over on our left, the Big Dipper. With stars for the cup where you put the water and a curved handle, also called the Drinking Gourd. Stellarium draws another pattern there that it calls the Mini Dipper. I've never heard of it, so I don't worry about it. And the last two stars in the cup of the Dipper point to the North Star, also called Polaris, the one star that stays in the same place all night. And over on the opposite side, the W-shaped constellation Cassiopeia. Now let's look back over toward the east and southeast again. 
and let time go through the night. Early in the evening after sunset and early in the morning before sunrise, you'll see artificial satellites, human-made objects in orbit around the Earth passing overhead. There's Mars coming up in the wee hours of the morning. Uranus, uh, you'll need a telescope to see that, I think. And then the planet that was really brilliant all during the spring is returning in the morning, Venus, just before sunrise. But we've got satellites too, and here's how to find out when satellites are going to appear. We recommend the website heavensabove.com, and with any of these websites, you need to tell it where you are on Earth and what date you want to look for, for it to give you a good prediction. Heavens Above is nice. It gives you an updated graphic of where the International Space Station is at any time. And let's look for 10-day predictions for the International Space Station. When will it appear in our sky? And here's the list. It's covering the period from June 24th to July 4th. And visible only means it's not showing us the passes that occur during the daytime when we wouldn't see it. Brightness, magnitudes, a more negative number means brighter. And we come down here and we see on the 1st of July a pass with a magnitude of minus 3.7. That's as bright as Venus. Let's see, it will first appear at 4.20 in the morning, 17 degrees above the west-southwestern horizon. At its highest point, the International Space Station on that morning will appear 4.23 in the morning, 78 degrees above the north-northwestern horizon, and then disappear, it says here, at 4.26 a.m. in the northeast. And then you click on the date in this Heavens Above com website and it gives you a star chart for that particular overpass or overflight of the International Space Station. And as I look at this I see it's going to appear near Venus in the sky plus some other bright stars. I can click on that area and get a detailed star chart if that's what I want. But heavensabove.com is a very handy website for finding out when visible satellites are going to go overhead, or for identifying a satellite you just saw and you want to know what it is. Let's go back to the sky, and I have selected the International Space Station Pass for early morning on July 1st. There are others, but I picked this one as an example of some of the spectacular ones that are coming up this week. Look at this, about 424 in the morning, you're facing east-northeast, and I have now set time to flow at its natural rate to show you how fast the space station appears to move across the sky. So if you're up early for one of these passes, we've got that bright star Capella, the extremely bright planet Venus, and the International Space Station flying over us. Also this beautiful little star cluster, the Pleiades, kids like to call it the Seven Sisters, Venus, and Venus is appearing in front of a V-shaped group of stars with a bright reddish star in it called Aldebaran. In the winter sky, we always refer to that as the constellation Taurus the Bull. And so check heavensabove.com. This is an example that I chose on the morning of July 1st at 4.20 in the morning, but there will be other space station passes that you can watch for. And with these beautiful, bright things coming into the morning sky, there will be spectacular things to, re uh, to reward early risers facing east. Well, we look forward to showing you things like this under the dome just as soon as we can do that safely. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and enjoy these beautiful summer nights.